wardrobe's talking about scales. I wonder what I should do. <gasps> I know! I should weigh myself at the bathroom scale. I go to weigh myself. Weigh myself. Whoa, 42 pounds. Oh, uh, hey, Toddy. Oh, hey, mister. Wardrobe's not talking about scale as in weigh yourself. He means the scales and that how big the figures are in the game, you silly pickle. I am a silly pickle. In vibrant color. Last class, we talked about the errors in theaters to help you decide where you want to be in the... Uh, War, so you know what kind of game you want to play, the size, the kind of, you know, action that you're going to see, the type of terrain. So now let's talk about scales. Well, do we mean by weighing yourself in the bathroom? Of course we don't. It's silly pickle toddy. What we mean is the size of the little soldiers you're going to play with. And so let's talk about that real briefly and then talk about some of the companies that, you know, make those, uh, make those miniatures. As you can see here, here are the primary sizes that you're going to play, you're going to see in 2020, 2021, and understand that when I say a size like 10 millimeter, well, there's also 12 millimeter, right? So there's some that go plus and minus a couple millimeters. You'll have to decide what you think, if it's the right size for you, and if you know, you're know you okay with, if you buy a 12 versus a 10, you have to sometimes compare and just ask on the forums. People are always, uh, can always help out because a lot of people have multiple companies miniatures. All right, well, so you can see the, the scales here in this picture. So the primary sizes that you're going to see are 2, 6, 10, 15, 20, and 28. I do want to mention something else about scale. Let's look at this picture here. So usually what people say is like, what scale are you playing in? And you mean 6 mil, 10 mil, 15 mil. And scale modelers get a little itchy when we talk like this, and some people use a different nomenclature. So someone might say, oh, I play rapid fire in 170 second scale. And you're like, whoa, 170 second, I've not even heard of that. Okay, well, if you're not familiar with scale modeling, so basically it's this. 170 second means that one inch in model world equals 72 inches in uh, real, the real life, right? So one inch equals 72 inches or six feet. So the standard soldier is six feet tall, okay? So sometimes when you hear that, there are lots of conversion charts out there. And like this picture that I'm showing here, it kind of gives that example. So there's a lot of examples of that. And I link to a few videos that explain some of this. And you can always look up, you know, miniature size to scale um, to do that. So where you hear that most is 172nd slash 176 with 20 mil. because That's a very popular model size. So the cool thing about knowing, knowing the scale is something you might be able to find scale models for it if you want to get into the modeling side a little bit and use those for your games. Uh, you may be able to find buildings, you may be able to find the equivalent train scale. So you can kind of do that and, you know, math three times over to see, oh, it's HO or N scale. And you can use those train tracks and those trains even in your game. So that, that's kind of a cool thing about knowing what they mean. And it also gives you an idea about 20 mil. Okay, so that's about... That's about six foot tall, it's about an inch tall. So that's an advantage of knowing scale over that. Well, what you wanna look at here though is when you're choosing a scale is, you know, when you're buying one of those starter sets, well, you're gonna be in whatever scale they have. So, Fames of War, you're going into 15. Bolt Action, you're going into 28. But you can play those games and in almost any of the games we talk about in any scale you want. For example, I've played um, Bolt Action in 15 and 6 mil. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed 15 in it very much. And there's people that play all the different scales. Now, if you're going to play tournaments uh, in those two rule sets that I specifically talked about, you're going to have to play in the scale. So if you're going to go to a Flames of War tournament, you're going to have 15 mil miniatures in the same 28 mil in a bolt action tournament. For the most part, you can most use most manufacturer's miniatures together. Understand, though, that they're not all created equal, and one person's 15 mil is not another person's 15 mil. They might be a little bigger or smaller. They might have bigger hands, and, you know, some are true scale, and some are, like, more, I guess, heroic, for lack of a better word. Like, their hands or faces are bigger, because that's what you really see and can, you know, can take, make a difference in a, a person. Um, so that, that's just something to know, and just with discussions with local people and gaming groups and online forums, you can compare and say, how does 
Battlefronts 15 look to Forged in Battles 15, and you, you can see the difference. And if you're okay using the two with each other, a lot of people don't mind, and especially in the smaller scale, it doesn't really matter. Even at 28, you know, if you look at people, we're all different sizes. So why would you choose one scale over the other? There's many things. Um, painting World War II is fairly simple. It's one reason I'm fortunately I'm happy that I like World War II, not like Napoleonics or something. It's pretty easy. You got greens, browns, and tans. That's for the most part pretty much what you're going to paint almost all the time, um, with little double dabbles of other color. Okay. So the cool thing, it's easy, no matter what size they are. But you might choose a scale because of this, you know, your amount of storage you have. Storing 28 mil buildings is a lot different than storing two mil buildings. What table size do you have? Standard gaming table size is six foot by four foot. Um, so you can get a lot more six mil on a, on a table as opposed to 28 mil. What, is, what are you comfortable with as far as um, well, how it looks on the table? I mean, maybe you want to see large armies of two mil or six mil figures going at it. Um, as opposed to a more crowded 28 mil using the same number of minis. Um, maybe the scale of the table works better. You like the way it looks like when six mil uh, figures are shooting at each other, you know, 12 inches apart, as opposed to two 28 mil figures firing at each other 12 inches apart. Um, you know, how's your eyesight? How's painting them? What's the experience of painting them? Cost, of course, you're going to get for the same cost, you're going to get more 15 mil figures than you're going to be 28. But maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe you only need 20 figures, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and maybe you don't want to paint that many. So, how much do you want to paint? How much do you want to assemble? 28 mil requires more assembly uh, than, say, you know, 6 mil, which requires almost none. Uh, so, how much do you want to do with that? What are the people around you playing? Are you going to be bringing all the armies? So there's a lot of little things to consider here as you're thinking about what scale you want. And really, Pete Bacchus, a YouTuber who I watch, uh, he says, you know, you're not a true gamer unless you're playing in uh, 10 scales. He's kidding, sort of. Uh, we can talk about, you know, what I've chosen. I started out in six and I'm primarily 15 now. Um, and we can, and, but you'll see another scale coming up in this uh, as a part of this series. Um, and it depends on the kind of game you're playing. If you're playing a skirmish game, you may want to use 28 mil because it's bigger, you don't need as many figures, and you can really get into the game. But if you're playing, um, you know, some level, and I, what I mean by skirmish is just like 10 against 10. But if you're playing some larger battle where you got like battalions and divisions going each other, which are large, you know, groups of men, soldiers, well, you're probably not going to want 28 mil. You're probably going to want smaller. Maybe. Again, play the way you want and figure, you know, work through that. What I want to do now is I want to kind of go through some of the manufacturers of the different scales. I am sure I missed some because especially at two mil, I came up with one manufacturer. But, you know, if you have some more, tell me. I'll put it in the, the blog post that I'll link to. And so there'll be a, a part of that at, at some point. These are the brands that I'm aware of and that you can still get. Um, there are manufacturers that come and go. But for the most part, I think you can still get all these manufacturers either direct or from a you know, friendly local game store or another distributor of some kind. So let's go through the list. All right, first I want to talk about Shapeways. This is, uh, you know, 3D printing is becoming uh, quite the thing. So Shapeways is a site where there are 3D printed models and those come in all scales and it really depends what you want. And there's some just kind of random models that you can find there, ships, planes, tanks, and maybe some infantry, but a little less that right now. First scale I want to talk about is two or three mil. The only company I know of right now is Pico Armor, and I've not seen any of their, it's hard to see their infantry and uh, tanks because they're tiny, but they are cool. People really like to use these for modern wargaming, but you could use them for larger division size games for World War II. And their buildings are really cool and very well detailed for the size. And I've painted up a couple of them and they paint up really well. So they're pretty cool to use. And um, I can, we could talk about how you can use those with larger scale uh, infantry figures uh, in another video. Next thing I want to talk about is 6 mil. Um, here are the companies that uh, do that that I'm aware of. 2D6, he's fairly new to the market, but he's doing some cool designs. CNC has been around a long time making 6 mil. There's GHQ, which is pictured here, and that's what I started with um, in World War II, and they're great minis, and uh, probably some of the more expensive, but you get some really great detail at that level, but that's what I started with. I really liked them. Of course, there's Heroics and Ross and Irregular, and I don't have any experience with those brands, but a lot of people like them. Um, I just haven't bought any myself. 10 mil, there's Magister Militum Pendraken which I have some experience painting those. I painted up some Germans and Paras and some tanks. 
very good detail, painted them up great, and I would use them again if I were using 10 mil. I'm just kind of stuck with 15 right now. And then there's Victrix, who is just now coming out with some 12 mil. You could probably mix some of their stuff with 10 mil and be okay, but again, kind of your mileage may vary on that. Um, I've heard they look really good. They're just coming out right now as I'm making this video, and I hear they look good and are painting up well, so that's something good there. New, new line. All right, 15 millimeter. There's a big group here. There's Battlefront, like we talked about, Flames of War. I've painted up those. They are good. Forged in Battle, I have some of those. Those are very good. Uh, they paint up... I didn't actually paint those. I actually paid someone to paint them, but they look great. Um, and I will tell you that Forged in Battle and uh, Battlefront are really good for buying like a platoon or more. Sometimes you you know buy, buying bigger sets um, that what you need. There's gaming models. That's what I have pictured here. Interesting uh, line that this gentleman has here. He cast them himself and makes them the resin. They're a cheaper model line, but they're made so you can get a bunch of tanks. They're made for Battlefront players who are playing, you know, and you need a lot of tanks or a variety. So you can buy one of something for five bucks, and it's pretty cool because he's got quite a range of things, kind of oddball things. Not as detailed, but they're good, and they look fine on the table. And they come pre-painted, though you'd probably want to do a little touch-up on them. Uh, there's Old Glory. Uh, those you can buy basically big bulk sets. You're going to buy a bunch of inventory, and it's, so if you're starting out, it might be a good thing to do. They have a cool discount program that you can join, and, um, and again, you, those are buying big sets of them. Now, Peter Pig is a company out of Britain. Very good models, again. I have some British para and Germans that, again, were painted for me, but they look really good. Very good detail for 15 but The cool thing about them is you pretty much buy smaller sets, and I think it's 8 to 10 figures, so you can kind of really uh, specialize what you're building out, and they have a very extensive range. I do not believe I have any of their vehicles, but their infantry is cool. You can, very detailed um, specialty figures you can buy there. And then there's Plastic Soldier Company, um, which is, again, larger sets. So you can, I think, the smallest you can buy is a platoon for those, I believe, and then usually like five tanks. You can occasionally buy sprues of things, and you can do that at Battlefront as well, so that's something to look for. Like you can buy one tank if you can find a sprue. Um, and so you can you can buy um, full companies that. The price is pretty decent on those. I think they are changing some of the molds on some of their models. So, All right, let's talk about 20 mil. Uh, I've pictured AB here. I don't really have much experience with some of these. I've seen some of various of these companies in person. I've not seen AB in person, but what I see of them uh, in photos on the net, they look great. So I pictured them here. Um, so there's AB, there's Elheim, Foundry, um, Italieri, which is the model company, and then there's, again, Plastic Soldier Company. And finally, in 28, there's a whole list of these. There's Black Tree Designs, which is, um, you can find, oftentimes he has sales on his models, and you can buy um, pretty good deals on those. Uh, there's Brigade Models, Foundry, Gaddis Gaming, there are North Star Crusader, who I have pictured here. I just pictured him here because I like the look of some of their pictures on there. There's Old Glory again. Uh, there's Perry, a very famous uh, couple of guys that sculpt many different uh, eras. And their models look really good. And, of course, Plastic Soldier Company again. And finally, Warlord, the makers of Bolt Action, uh, which I do have some experience with, which you'll see coming up soon. Um, so those are the uh, 28 mil companies. So those are all the miniature companies. Again, I'm going to put links to all those. Obviously, you can search them, uh, but I'll put links on the blog post uh, that I'll link to below and just to expedite your searching. And again, you just have to ask people around, ask around, look at their pictures. Most of them have pictures on the web, and most of these, like I said, you can get now. Okay, well, I hope that um, helps you think through kind of the scale you're going to have. You're probably going to need to try a couple just buy a couple little sets and try painting them, see what they like, what you like on the table. Again, place goes to some local games. Uh, you know, people are always welcoming, usually welcoming to game, new gamers and see what scale you like. So I hope that's helped you out. At right, the next time, we're gonna talk about size matters. What's the size of the game you wanna play? Remember I talked about skirmish or battalion or division? We're gonna talk about that, what that means, kind of some definitions of that, and then the kind of some of the rule sets that help you play some of those games. So have fun, play your way, keep learning, start digging in, and enjoy your hobby.
We'll see you.